Hello. DJI just released their newest action camera, the Osmo Action 4. Yeah. Let's see how it stacks up to the GoPro 11. Now I do want to say DJI did send me their new Osmo Action 4, but they are not paying me to say anything about their camera in particular. The point of this video is to showcase what both cameras are capable of and then have you make your own opinion. I'll, I'll throw my thoughts in at the end, but I want you to be the judge. Image quality. Hi. Hello. On the left, you'll see the GoPro 11. On the right, that's the DJI Osmo Action 4. I'm shooting on the settings I'm gonna be using the most while I'm mountain biking. That's 4K at 60 frames per second on both cameras. And each are shooting at their widest field of view. So DJI calls this ultra wide and GoPro calls this hyper view. Everything else, including exposure and white balance is all left to auto. This is just kind of like the entryway oh, to the World Cup line. Nice pop. Oh, beautiful. Over the root, double, double. Woo! No! This is really important. You'll notice right off the bat, the Hero 11 produces a warmer and more saturated image while the OA4 creates a more neutral image. But try to avoid solely focusing on the color and tones because those things can be adjusted with some simple color grading. Instead, focus on the overall image quality that's produced by both cameras. Look at the pebbles on the trails, the tree needles in the distance. How does the grass look? Do the details change in a low light environment versus a well-lit space? Let's go left side here. Beautiful. Full text section. Look at the right side. Cool. Oh, I could have chose a little bit better of a line there. And a huge one near and dear to my heart is the distortion of the image. Like I said, I'm currently recording on the widest field of view each camera has to offer. And historically, GoPro has achieved a wider image by creating this sort of fisheye effect, which yes, creates a wider field of view, but at the same time, really distorts the perimeter of the image, which makes it really difficult for the viewer to gauge the true steepness of some of these trails and the sheer magnitude of some of these features. Versus the Osmo Action 4, which first of all, shoots at a wider FOV than the GoPro to begin with. And secondly, doesn't use a fisheye effect to get you to that point. It doesn't distort the image. As a skiing and biking creator, you wanna be able to gauge the, the true scale and steepness of these runs and features you're hitting. And for a camera to allow you to do that, it's still not great, don't get me wrong. Action cameras have a long way to go, but the DJI is making steps that really gets me excited about the footage. Whoa, animal. Whoa, animal! Woo! <laughs> Now the GoPro isn't left empty handed. It does come with a couple of advantages. The camera supports 5K footage. You're able to shoot at 5.3K at 60 FPS versus the Osmo Action 4 that caps out at 4K resolution. And the GoPro also has that lovely eight by seven aspect ratio. This means you can shoot in portrait and landscape simultaneously. So you can use the exact same shot for a TikTok and a YouTube video without any unnecessary cropping. When it comes to image quality, both cameras are exceptional. In good and bad lighting, they both capture sufficient detail and define a lot of the terrain around you. Stabilization on both cameras are exceptional. Both offer ample slow-mo options. You can shoot at 4K 120 on both cameras. But when it comes to my needs as a YouTube creator, the Osmo Action 4 does have a slight edge because I'm able to shoot at a wider FOV without distorting the perimeter of that image. The eight by seven aspect ratio on the GoPro is really nice to have but for the most part all my footage is shot in landscape 16 by 9 so it's not a deal breaker for me reliability is 2023 both of these cameras are extremely reliable regardless of the elements you put them through both cameras are extremely durable they can weather an impact better than dwayne johnson and the scratch resistance on both lenses and screens are phenomenal but the oa4 does go above and beyond the call of duty it offers much better waterproofing you're able to reach depths of 59 feet with the osmo action 4 versus the gopro which is only good for 33 feet dji's batteries hold a longer charge you're able to record up to 100 160 minutes on the Osmo Action 4 versus 120 minutes on the GoPro. And while the GoPro has seemed to fix their freezing issues with their new Enduro batteries, they don't 
really freeze in the cold as much as the previous generation. I'm still having some problems with overheating. I was recording my mouth move on the chairlift and the GoPro actually ended up overheating and shut off. Keep in mind it was 30 degrees outside, the sun was blasting down on the camera, there wasn't a lot of wind resistance to cool off the camera on the chairlift, but it still ended up overheating versus the Osmo Action 4, which held up fine. Accessibility or ease of use. Just like the Osmo Action 3, the OA4 has DJI's magnetic quick release latching mechanism. This means instead of taking your glove off on the chairlift in minus 30 degree weather to unscrew your GoPro from its mount, you can simply pull off the OA4 from its latch while keeping your hands in your toasty mitt. The GoPro screw in squeeze clip that we've been using for over a decade now works well. It's, it's tried and true. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the DJI. That latch is that much more convenient. It doesn't need to be, but the fact that it's there, nice and there's a bunch of other features on the oa4 that dji has implemented to make it more user friendly they're not the biggest deal but it's definitely nice to have both screens on the front and back are touch enabled you can customize your quick switch buttons to any mode you want you can get a compact battery case that charges and holds up to three batteries making it easy to swap out while you're recording and it also has this invisi stick support meaning you can stitch out selfie sticks while you're recording similar to what we've seen with some 360 cameras in the past Price to performance. Right now, both cameras cost 399 United States dollars. It's a lot of money. Which one is right for you completely depends on your needs. If you're looking for something that shoots in 5K and allows you to get a lot of use out of your footage through that eight by seven aspect ratio, definitely lean towards the GoPro Hero 11. But if you're looking for an action camera that creates a more immersive shot, does a better job showcasing the reality of some of these features that you're hitting the steepness of some of the trails you're going down and you want something that's a little bit more reliable in extreme weather conditions, I'd go for the Osmo Action 4. Plus you also, that, I'm sorry, really nice.